attention. All right, guys, this is a hot topic. So hot that we decided to surround ourselves in water just to balance it out. Today's topic, <laughs> I'm pretending to rip, <laughs> is gonna be on uh, marijuana. And uh, I recently did like a, an experiment using marijuana pretty consistently for about maybe the last 50 days. I don't know, I forgot. <laughs> kind of kidding. But uh, luckily enough, right when I was feeling the urge to do a video about it, our friend Brian here from Canada, or Canadian, our Canadian friend here, came on our retreat in Traverse City and you were quite passionate about cannabis. I am, yes. Yes. And uh, so I thought it was a perfect time maybe to talk about someone that I can talk about my own experience and maybe bounce ideas off each other about someone that has more experience. How old are you? 22. And how long have you been using cannabis? Uh, the first time I smoked cannabis, I was 17. Okay, so, so, so a solid five years. Is that yeah, how consistently? There's been some breaks. I'd say averaging at least a few times a week. Okay, cool. But there's been some breaks. Now, and um, also, I, I can... I probably I'm okay. You're okay to talk about your experience in Peru as well. Yeah. Okay, because you did ayahuasca about 40 times in about five months. Yes, yes, yes. I was um, I was apprenticing under a shaman. I went down to apprentice under a shaman in uh, in the Peruvian Amazon um, and spent about five months there. Yeah. All Before right. the last month and a half, I used marijuana for the very first time when I was 24 years old on my 24th birthday in Amsterdam and I have quite the lung capacity and I decided to smoke as much as I can at once and I really uh, I think I hit the point of potential hallucination is that possible yeah I think definitely especially if you're smoking something that's that's really high in THC um, so the psychoactive side of cannabis it's it's definitely doable to, to have hallucinations and, and, and have those really powerful, almost psychedelic-like experiences. Yeah, yeah, that was for sure. I almost thought that I could see the words coming out of my mouth, and then when my friend, who was also using it, told me he did see the words coming out of my mouth, that definitely started to trip me out a little bit. <laughs> um, but that the reason I want to bring that up is because now that I have a little more experience with it, and I have a lot more experience with coffee, you know, using it myself, that I thought of the analogy that the first time someone's using cannabis or any type of marijuana product, and then the same with coffee or the same with alcohol, you want to tell them to drink 15 beers or you want to tell them to drink a handle of liquor or you want to tell them to have 12 espresso shots because most likely their experience will not be that conducive to growth. It's more of a you lose yourself rather than finding things about yeah, yourself. Yeah, it'll be overwhelming. It'll be overwhelming and you won't, be, you won't know how to how to deal with this new sort of state that you've found yourself in. Um, I think in terms of cannabis, I think that very thing is, is what puts a lot of people off of it. Um, their first time having too much and then uh, having potential, what you call a bad trip or paranoia or whatever, and they sort of freak out. Um, and then the, their relationship with that can be, can be ruined for a long time. Yeah, so I, that's the first thing is first. If, if for any reason someone's going to be trying cannabis for the first time based on this video, or maybe it'll spark an interest, pun intended, we're, uh, we're getting off, off the shore here, <laughs> um, that it's very important to use it, in my opinion, for the first few times or your first experiences, to use it very moderately. You don't have to go over the top, just like coffee. If you've never drank coffee before and you want to drink coffee after this video, I wouldn't tell you to drink 10 espresso shots. I wouldn't tell you to hit uh, a gravity bong of marijuana. And I wouldn't tell you to drink a bottle of liquor for the first time experimenting with alcohol. So if you're gonna use it, use it, use it, and don't be used by it. Mm -hmm. Try it, just a little puff, wait 30 minutes. Um, how, would you, how would you recommend it, like a first time user? Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna smoke, a few inhales maybe, and yeah, wait. Wait 30 minutes, wait an hour maybe. Well, if you're smoking, you don't have to wait that long. Maybe 30 minutes. If you're eating. Yeah, if you're eating, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. I don't know if you want to get into that on well, this video. I know that's, uh, I've heard this multiple times. I had one space cake. I didn't feel anything, so I ate another one, and then I hated my next 20 hours. Like, yeah. So, how long do you think you have to wait if you're going to eat something to feel the effects? I would say at least an hour to two or maybe three. I mean, if you have nothing in your stomach, 
then it's going to kick in faster. But if you have like a full meal in there, um, it could take upwards of two, three hours. By ingesting that plant, you're, you're actually tuning into its sort of spirit or frequency, whatever you want to call it. Um, which of course, it being a plant, is it's immersed in nature. Um, and it, I guess it knows that. Um, modern man, I guess we're kind of disconnected from our relationship with nature. We don't. We are a part of it, and we like to externalize it and call it, you know, the environment or what's out there. Um, but we're part of this natural world. And I think, at least for me, cannabis and other plant medicines really uh, help me to help bring that to the forefront of my consciousness. That I am a part of this world and this nature and everything we have and our bodies are made up of natural living organisms that have died and reproduced or allowed us to sustain ourselves yeah yeah that, and i think i, I think what's what i hear is that and what i feel when i do the induce some of the sacred herb is that i take on the plant's perspective and i think that's another reason for me i when i did, did it in the past and it may have not been technically legal now i have a license i went through the california laws i got a california card and i buy it legally from a dispensary that that plant that's being grown in the legal environment i think has a much more less of a paranoid environment than say if a drug dealer like say if mm. an illegal drug dealer was growing it stuffing it in his butt and dealing it on the streets it, mm -hmm. it takes on a totally different energy than one maybe that's grown with care nurture and love mm -hmm. and on top of that I'm, I'm a big advocate of following god's law which is following man's law and being at peace with that and for me I think if I was drinking Coca-Cola or if I was drinking coffee and coffee was illegal or prohibited, I'd probably be paranoid drinking that coffee. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, the cops, are, who's going, who's, who's seeing me drink this, who's judging me? Yeah. Um, so I'm a big fan of the legalization of marijuana. Uh, we, and with this, I don't want this, uh, there's a whole nother hours and hours of video that you can find anywhere. Who's mm -hmm. a good, who's a good person? Maybe like Joe Rogan or someone Joe too? Rogan's definitely been a, a, a huge proponent for uh, oh, legalization yeah. and I guess responsible use um, for the, the spiritual as well as medical and physical benefits of it. Um, I mean, he wrote a blog post that really inspired me years back called I Like to Get High and Work Out, which was all about him talking about um, getting high and uh, hitting his heavy bag and doing like intense exercise and just tapping into that sort of primal feeling and the energy of your body and really going deep and using it to enhance your physicality and your, your awareness. Um, which is something it's pretty much these days um, unless I'm just relaxing mm -hmm. I'll pretty much always anytime I'm gonna smoke cannabis it's gonna be in a context of enhancing some sort of exercise or yoga practice if you're big into yoga and you've never tried cannabis that could be really transformative for you um, here we'll paddle and talk a little bit yeah just because we're getting find, in people's yards like maybe more this way yeah I find uh, okay the more you do it, and the more in tune with your body you get, then the more it'll bring you, it'll raise that to an even higher level when you when you ingest um, uh, a substance like cannabis, um, which for me is invaluable, especially in something like yoga where you're so concerned with posture and breathing, and uh, it can be very strenuous, but so strenuous and even potentially painful. Um, depending on how hard you're working out and uh, I find it allows me to to feel through the pain and to breathe through the pain or, or whatever the sensation is the, the discomfort that might come with your 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 exercise your yoga practice um, it just makes it so much easier to get through hmm and that's get, interesting yeah and to get through and to remain calm and to remain well there is a, a lot of people use it for pain the treatment of pain. Yeah. Here we'll yeah. paddle forward so we don't run into that dot like back towards that way. Which is also another I mean if we board, I mean if we just want to scratch the surface of why an a weed, a actual weed, may have been banned, let's just take a quick look at the pharmaceutical industry and see what a competitor marijuana is to some of the biggest named drugs out there. Mm. For me, it's some of the best sleeping medicine I've ever came across. So right there, you're competing with billion dollar companies yeah. that anyone can grow in their own yard. Of course, I mean, come on. Like, yeah. That's one of the reasons I was so fascinated by it beyond like listening to a lot of Rasta music and Bob Marley mm. growing up and having a lot of inspirational figures speak about it in a positive way. 
is that it's just clear to me that there's obviously some sort of conspiracy behind it because it's a weed that can take out pharmaceutical industries. Yeah. I mean, I got it based, the doctor, the marijuana doctor gave it to me for ADHD. And he mm. was a huge advocate of marijuana for ADHD because it mm. helps some people focus, especially the sativa blend. Mm -hmm. um, so right there, we got you kind of got to think for yourself. We're talking about something that grows in nature naturally. Where do you know where it was first found? Or I believe it comes from India originally. Um, I don't know if there's hard science on that. Um, that's that's my guess. That's that's kind of my best guess. Is India, although I would imagine Asia, parts of Asia would have had it as well. Um, but there is. Uh, information and documentation that, that, that says that you know most human societies if not all that have had access to this um, have really seen it for its potential for healing and use it as a medicine use it for fiber and for food um, I mean if you look at the the male plant the hemp plant which um, is has a complete protein in the seeds and uh, a perfectly balanced ratio of essential fatty acids um, it's just yeah it's just so many uses and so easy to grow, and yeah. so potentially beneficial. A weed. And yeah, so <laughs> it's the, the, crazy. there's a lot of money at stake if, uh, if we embrace that in our culture. Yeah, and forget the medicinal aspects for a second. Just like you said, the industrial uses of it. For, mm -hmm. I mean, you can use it for paper, food, oil, clothing. That's, and I think a lot of times marijuana has the rep it does because the lobbyist of those companies that are the competitor of marijuana, whether it's a pharmaceutical or a drug company or an industrial company, of course they're going to benefit from demonizing marijuana. So it takes out one of the competitors. Mm -hmm. It's just like everything else. And they've done a really good job at it. They've actually, it's been prohibited for a lot of parts of the United States. But I think just like you mm -hmm. see in the local food movement and the exercise culture and the movement movement, that is just storming the world right now. There's people are calling back for their freedom of growing and using marijuana. And that's pretty awesome. It's pretty fascinating to see that take place, especially in states like California, Colorado. Actually, Colorado, you just have to be 21 mm -hmm. and anyone can use it. Recreational use. That's pretty cool. But that being said, I'm always, I've always been hesitant to recommend something that we were talking about this at the retreat today, that sometimes the bigger the light that something brings, the bigger the shadow is. Mm. And I think you see that a lot in substances, especially drug-like substances that can change the way you feel or change you the way your brain works or your body is, such as coffee, alcohol, and marijuana, all very old and sacred traditional substances we've induced. Usually, I think in the past, way back in the day, ceremoniously, mm -hmm. um, that, that if you're not careful, you can definitely be used by coffee alcohol, marijuana, mm -hmm. that you can definitely use it to escape. And that's why, as being a Rob Bra, we love reporting the truth, but at the same time, I am aware of the shadow side of just, you know, it's just kind of like, I have a protective, I, I personally feel a little protective sometimes over my audience to recommend things such as that, because mm -hmm. just like over your kids, mm -hmm. like maybe someone has had, had one of the greatest times of their lives over marijuana, they've had breakthroughs, they've shifted paradigms, they've learned how to drive boats better, actually I don't recommend that, <laughs> but um, they've just learned a lot from it, but they don't want to tell their kids about it. It's a little taboo because they know they can also, if you do too much of it, then it becomes a very scary experience, or it can, someone could do something they regret, or something they're not, they're not doing actually, it almost becomes manipulative, they're not acting mm -hmm. no longer how they feel, they get, it becomes too intense. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, since you seem, you're probably more of a public advocate with your friends, and I, maybe I have that more of that parental or father, like, I don't know if I want to tell my audience about this, mm. how would you recommend it, like, in a safe, do you think anyone could use it anyway, or how do you recommend getting it, or? I mean, it's tough, it's tough. Depending on where you live, if it's illegal, then you're definitely going to have to technically break laws to, 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 get, some, to get some cannabis. Although in Canada, you can argue whether it's actually, it's, it's, it's almost considered legal. I mean, the police aren't worried about kids smoking pot. Okay. Um, so getting it, I mean, you want to get it from somebody who, who you can trust, ideally, um, if you have that, uh, that option. Um, and then as far as trying it, I mean, just rolling a little, a little joint or a little split for having a little toke. Um, a vaporizer is always nice if you have a, 
I know in Toronto where I'm from and other places they have vapor lounges so you can go in there pay five bucks bring your own herb bring your own cannabis and use their vaporizers um, and what's great about that is that there's no actual smoke so it's very it's not harsh on the lungs if, if you've never smoked anything it can be pretty uh, irritating and uh, discomforting yeah and I've also heard that's just sometimes from the heat yeah having yeah, that yeah. hot air into your lungs exactly and so the vaporizer is definitely I think my ro most recommended uh, way um, although I still there's still something about like rolling a joint or a spliff and sharing that with friends that just has just a very special feel to it um, but then yeah I mean be smart don't do it if you're if you're already anxious and worried type of person then you probably want to stay away from it at least for that time um, the way I see it and the way I've heard it described is that it makes it, it amplifies what you already have within you it makes you more of what you already are so if you're generally you know a very nice easygoing person calm relaxed um, it's probably gonna make you more of that hmm. um, but if you're tend to be more on the paranoid side or the worrisome side and then if, if you combine that with being in an environment where you think someone might come and catch me or the police might smell this or something like that's just gonna set you off in the wrong or the wrong if path. you're at a party like imagine like this is why I always feel like an 18 year old girl mm. at like a frat party mm. who's already probably pretty paranoid and rightfully so yeah rightfully so paranoid and then they decide to smoke and they smoke way too much like that is an awful introduction to marijuana in my opinion like a, yeah. an awfully skewed view of what that medicine is yeah because it's probably just gonna, like you said, amplify the paranoia. You're probably gonna start wondering about everything that's going on. You're gonna become much more sensitive to people's energy. And sometimes, if you're in a, in a community of people that you're not comfortable with their energy, I would not want to be um, on herb during that process. I want to be around people that I'm super comfortable with, people that I want to connect with and empathize with. And mm. most, and even the cherry on top would be to be in nature, around yes. a campfire maybe. Yes. And a safe area, a safe, comfortable community and out in nature would be ideal for me. Yes, I, I would completely agree there. And not too much, just very moderately. Yeah. It's definitely for me, um, I do believe that if I go to a doctor, I could easily be diagnosed with ADHD. And I've done a video about that. Like, I think AD, being ADHD is a gift. I think mm -hmm. it's ambitious, defiant, happy, dandable. That's my acronym for ADHD. But there's a dual side to that. There's the shadow side of that, that sometimes I'm easily distracted and that I can be all over the place and my stream of consciousness can be very chaotic. Um, and that's and I just have a lot of energy. Um, so sometimes if I want to sit down and maybe if I'm going, a friend is going through a tough time where I'm having a hard time seeing things from their perspective or maybe I'm feeling a lack of empathy I have realized that if I do smoke a little bit and then I sit down and talk with them and oh and I think it's very important personally for me I like to set an intention before I smoke of what I want the marijuana to do for me do I want it to bring me closer to God do I want I usually am praying for it to be bring a closer connection to God um, to Jesus to my friends to my family that I connect better that's my usually my prayer and I want it to be good for me my body my soul my spirit my psyche, I want that to add value to all of that. And then I've noticed that I sometimes I just see things from a whole, it's like I'm experiencing it for the first time like through uh, a baby's eyes or a beginner's eyes and I can empathize with the, pe the people around me much to a much greater capacity. And that's been a real blessing and beyond just my own testimony, people have noticed that, you know, I have friends that I'm not sure exactly how I feel about this, but they, uh, they want me to smoke weed. <laughs> they like me better. <laughs> Today I haven't smoked, but um, after my time in the Amazon, um, doing a lot of reading about shamanism and plant spirit healing and just herbal medicine, um, just this overwhelming idea that, I mean, plants have been around longer than, longer than us, right? They've been on this earth a lot longer than us. Um, and I believe that they've been learning and learning how to adapt to the environment. That's why they're so medicinal. They have all these compounds within them that help them to adapt to their environment. Um, which is why when we take them in, they can be medicinal for us because we can benefit from those same compounds. And so, yeah, they, they offer perspectives. They offer different perspectives and they allow us to get connected to ourselves more, I believe, and to the environment around us and to, I, I think, to a spiritual side of us. Um, and the way 
the belief that I have is that sort of each species of plant has its own spirit. Like plants to me are conscious spiritual beings. Um, not necessarily each individual one, but each sort of family of plants. They have sort of a shared spirit, um, which almost, and this might sound bad, but almost like possesses you in a way when you ingest it. But not, not that it takes con to total control if used mindfully. Of course, you're still in control. You're kind of just benefiting from its perspective and its presence. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have the, uh, I see both sides of it. I see from, first of all, it will help you question. If you want to question things, um, and that can be scary for a lot of people. Some people want to be left in the dark. They don't want to ask those questions. And I think that's another reason a lot of times paranoia comes in or that the, uh, they can, they all of a sudden they go down like a schizophrenic rabbit hole or a, a rabbit hole of like everyone's out to get them. Mm. And I think if you're the more you're in denial about that, the more likely that is going to happen. But for me, I, I, I have these questions, but I really try to have the intention that I want to have fun with these challenges. Mm. I don't want it to be a thing that consumes, consumes me. I don't want to be a worried all day about the apocalypse or mm. the Illuminati or whatever <laughs> the uh, plants might bring up for me to... Yeah. To study, I just want to. I want to make sure to have fun with. It. If originally it was just sort of a social party thing, um, which I think for a lot of people that's how they start. Um, but I've seen it with friends of my own. Um, it doesn't take too long before it becomes almost a very isolating thing, and uh, you find yourself just smoking and staying in your room and watching YouTube videos. The basic nature of plants and all these things is like to thrive and be healthy, and I believe that's that's true for us too. That by our nature, we're meant to be healthy yeah. and vital and, and thinking clearly and, uh, and learning and growing. And when we go against, or when we set ourselves up in situations that, that don't contribute to our health, our, our, our health, and then we add a substance on top of that, it's just gonna make it that much stronger. Yeah, I would highly recommend uh, watching the movie The Botany of Desire. I think Michael Pollan might be the narrator who also wrote In Defense of Food and Omnivore's Dilemma. Mm. But he has a, a fascinating perspective of it. It's basically the plant's perspective of how a lot of times humans, like, you know, us being as self-centered as we are and thinking that yeah. we're in control of everything. So many, not, uh, not everyone, but sometimes we fall victim to that. A lot of people do. That w we think that we're in control of marijuana or that we think that we're in control of apples or we think we're in control of potatoes. I think mm -hmm. those were some of the examples he used. But in reality, are we sure that the, it's a good th question? Are th is these plants using us? Or is marijuana using us because it's created this substance of THC or CBDs or all these beneficial properties for humans to ingest mm -hmm. so we would grow more of it and it could spread out and it could be it can flourish and mm -hmm. just like apples you know apples are apple trees are genius enough to pr produce an edible fruit that's good for us mm. that has seeds in the inside that a lot of times people and animals carry apples with them and they digest the seeds and poop them out or the seeds fall when they're eating and it gives the uh, apple the opportunity the apple tree to grow somewhere else and grow somewhere new mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting to feel that just to surrender to maybe maybe we're not as in control as we think maybe there's something much bigger going on and that we can be in harmony with all these plants around us. Mm -hmm. well, I still have my own dualistic thoughts about it and I brought it up to Brian today sometimes about plant medicine. Is it just giving us like a peephole to a higher level of consciousness and that might, is that preventing us from reaching that higher level of consciousness permanently in eternity? Mm. And then those could just be some religious fears that are based on reality or they could just be based on fears and maybe egotistical thoughts and maybe people that were in power and that wanted profit to control us with fear. But what it has done, at least I'm, for me, what I look at it as like I'm in a place where when I want change to take place, I think we need an awareness and acceptance and action. And this has, with the aid of cannabis and my intentions and prayers and surrounding me with certain types of people, I've started asking these questions and this has been brought to my awareness and I'm accepting that I'm insecure. I've accepted that I'm insecure. I can't answer all the questions. There is a lot of mystery still there that I don't really ever expect to figure it all out. Mm. But what I do want to figure out is how to have fun along the way and to enjoy the journey and to realize that the mystery may be the prize and the challenge may be my gift. Mm. And um, I do think marijuana has added to that ability but maybe there's people out there that are Sure, we talked about this also in the retreat that
I think to the the shadow side of faith is doubt, and I look at I have a lot of faith, but I have a lot of doubt, and they're just do two different sides of the coin. But maybe some people speak, you know, about religion and the afterlife and certain aspects that are more debatable, like they're one hundred percent sure about them. Mm. And to me, when I, when I hear someone speak like that, I, I hear someone that doesn't, in my experience is I hear someone that doesn't have much faith. They're just more delusionally sure. Mm -hmm. And I think there's real wisdom and in, in security. And uh, I just invite anyone that's interested to in that and embracing the wisdom of insecurity and seeking the truth, whatever that might be for you and for other people, uh, to keep, keep, you know, I invite you to come along for our journey. Come to a Rob Barraza retreat. Um, watch these videos, experiment with what you will in a healthy manner, in a conducive manner with good intentions and or prayers behind that mm -hmm. and report back objectively as you can. You know, objectivity is subjective on a certain level, but mm. as objectively as possible. And I know that might have gotten, did you follow me on that or was that a little heady? No, I think I followed you. <laughs> you might just be a little heady. Maybe some people, you might be a little heady too. I don't think so. <laughs> as you can tell, so. a busy street with all that hair up there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty complete about this subject for now. I know some people from the retreat uh, recommended that we start doing a segment on the Rob Ross channel, like a bowl of Danimal. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did not, I did not smoke today. Have you? No. I, I know some people like to write it. That's, so that, that's another dualistic nature is like, it, some, there's so many judgments about marijuana or whatever it might be, alcohol, that sometimes when you see someone that's on marijuana, other people have a tendency like, oh, he's just high. Mm. And he doesn't, whatever he's saying doesn't matter, he's just high. Yeah. But I don't know, some people have that same perspective on dreams. And sometimes I wonder if dreams are closer to reality than our wake state. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for anyone that thinks that, just look at so many of the great thinkers of our time who have admitted to using marijuana. Um, Carl Sagan comes to mind. Countless artists uh, who used it for their inspiration, and um, yeah, I don't believe that an insight gained under the influence of a substance or in a, a different state of consciousness has any less value than an insight or something learned in um, in a regular sober, a quote-unquote sober state, um, which is something I've been questioning a whole lot lately. That. Um, you know, are we, are we ever really sober? There's always something going on biochemically or neuro, our neurotransmitters. There's always something. It's just usually more subtle than, than it is noticeable. Yeah, and it's, it's just hard for me to believe that knowledge is evil. Yes. That's where, like, that's where maybe I'm currently... I'm not saying that I need to go experience everything to have a better understanding, but... A plant that grows from the ground that many inspirational people have used and uh, great spiritual leaders. Um, and who knows, like, you know, there's definitely the control aspect. Maybe more people have used it that we don't even know about. But I want to be complete. Mm. I don't want to keep secrets. And I want to share that I am using it currently. And this is my experience. For the, I, mean, I tried to summarize a lot of my experience for this video. So hopefully it resonated uh, with you or intrigued you or maybe even triggered you. And that would be a blessing in itself. I think when we get triggered by someone telling the truth, that it's a great growth opportunity to look at it. What is in ourself that this person is triggering or reflecting that we don't know about ourselves, we don't understand, or we don't like about ourselves, or we want for ourselves. So yeah, thank you for being brave enough to take a look in the mirror if you're still here with us. <laughs> and if you are still here with us, what would be a good keyword? Good keyword. Uh huh. Um, what's that? What's like a? What's a funny slang for marijuana? What's like one of the funniest slangs you've heard for marijuana? Funny slang. There's grass, ganja. Just say I think your or say your battery. Say reference about the battery getting low. That was your your battery is low or your, did your battery get low there? And then we'll know you stuck with us the whole way. And if that's so, if we have enough people doing that, maybe we'll make more longer videos on somewhat complex subjects such as this that don't get talked about too often. Mm -hmm. They're maybe hidden a lot, hidden for whatever reasons, whether it's for powerful reasons, power reasons or profit reasons, or just because maybe it's easier to control people that don't think outside the box. Mm -hmm. They don't think for themselves. They don't take on the plant's perspective. Yeah. They take on the media's perspective. <laughs> Tell lies to my vision. <laughs> Television. <laughs> Anywho, you, you feeling good? I'm feeling Do great. Do you have a, a video? You want 
to plug anything that you do? Do you have any like websites or anything? Or I have a website, BrianHardy.net. Um, more to come on there right now, or more, yeah, more to come in the future. I have a Twitter. It's uh, Brian underscore Hardy. Uh, Facebook as well, Brian Hardy. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, how how was your real quick? I know we might get you in a testimony, but how was your uh, experience at the retreat? The experience in the retreat was great. Um, taking the time to get away from the city to to get in touch with the great outdoors here, this beautiful clean air and just green and trees all around. But then also to be around people that that want to grow and that want to be honest and that want to know what's holding them back and what's what they're doing great and um, so they can keep improving and growing in their lives. Um, I think that overall attitude is something that we so desperately need is for people to to see their lives as an experiment and to to take the perspective of okay I only got however many years on this planet let's make them the best I can and let's try and get the most love and connection and learning and different novel experiences out of that ex out of that life um, and so I think something like this for me has definitely been a great way to to work on my own self experiments to work on my my own judgments or thoughts or things that I'm dealing with um, and to have people reflect that back to you is very very helpful for me yeah, I'm really, you know, I'm stoked to hear that. And uh, for me, just I continuously get big takeaways and revelations or epiphanies at these experiences because we always have so many great teachers that come on the retreat. Um, but I really do believe as a just great life advice is to continuously to ask for what you want and to not be attached to getting it. That was one I got from last night. And then today I was just thinking about the concept of how much divine light is pouring on us and the more that we're able to accept that divine light then maybe the more of a shadow we have but that's why I believe God gave us a heart and a spirit is to shine light on that shadow and to maybe get a more holistic feel a whole feeling a whole feeling of having light from all directions and to be a light beam and um, that sometimes takes shadow exploration and I love being around a group of people that are willing and have the courage to go there to bring light to their shadows to, exp to use their mind to connect to their heart and expose light to the shadows, light to the dark side. And yeah, it's amazing to have people like Brian and the beautiful camera woman. If you want to say hi real quick. Hi. <laughs> want to do a flip for real? A candid selfie? No. Candid <laughs> selfie. Hi. <laughs> she came from Mex New Mexico. And um, we just had an amazing group of people that were willing. And I, I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So see yeah. you next time. Peace. <laughs>